Face reality, people. Movies are dead. Games are dead. Narrative, dead. Media is nothing but neural trigger response and viral conditioning. Wait, what are you two talking about? Okay. I just watched a movie called The Beekeeper with Jason Statham, action star extraordinaire. Uh, interesting movie, not not necessarily in a good way. I mean, I'll, I'll give them points for having like a subtle political narrative in there. Not saying like if it has political messaging, that means it's good. Like, nah. I, I mean, like someone was attempting to say something. So I'll give. If it doesn't come off as over the top empty, right? There, there's some sort of messaging there. I just think it's kind of so simple and. That it, it, it like it's like that main idea I think they were going for wasn't expanded upon. They spent more time on action sequences and Jason Statham beating up the bad guys, but there was kind of a narrative there, right? Where he's like, "Um, I'm the beekeeper. I protect the hive," and I guess that's a metaphor for like the the corrupt, powerful that take advantage of the powerless, and you know we're the the keepers of the world who beat the fuck out of them, metaphorically speaking, when they uh, overstep and try to take too much advantage or do overtly corrupt things to the, to, I guess, the the innocent people. I'm like, eh, okay. Uh, but my God, there's, there's a shit ton of flubs everywhere, which, and, and the flubs are not not just not just with like the filmmaking but also like for me the messaging itself i think the flubs are big enough for me to like not give that high of a grade to the movie right uh, let me say uh well, there's some like funny things in here that are like <laughs> kind of like what the fuck is this doing in a movie type thing uh, the right the the old lady in the beginning of the movie that gets scammed, right, and she kills herself. Like, like she kills herself. It's like what? <laughs> like no, like because Jason Statham said it. Like stealing from an old person, right? Because they don't know how to use computers is like stealing from a child. I find that just a hilarious line, and the way it's executed is also kind of funny to me. <laughs> I know it's an old lady shooting herself. That's not nice, but that in a movie, that's fucking funny. It, like, uh, she didn't think to call the bank or something, or call the police. Her daughter's FBI. Like, maybe she could help. I don't know. She's just like, "Fuck, it's all gone. I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> what have I done?" Uh, <laughs> but it, that seemed like. That narrative of the old lady, the thing that kicks off the entire, the reason why Jason Statham, aka the beekeeper dude, is terrorizing all these motherfuckers is because of that. And it looks like what they were doing was setting that up to get it out of the fucking way, just so Jason Statham can go in the f to fuck people up mode and just rampage through <laughs> all these goons and shit throughout the movie. Goons and cops and all that shit. Uh... And once again, you could be a fan of these action movies and you can understand that, right? It's, you know, the action genre. I understand it. But is it, for me, will it ever be forgivable? No. Make, like, have points of narrative to where your action means something. You know, even though I don't think this was the greatest Nolan movie ever, The Dark Knight Rises, the third, the third movie of the trilogy where uh Bane and Batman get into a fight and they're talking they're talking to each other as they're fight like that is a it's like a story upon itself there's something to it it isn't just blood guts and muscles flying around for the sake of it and bullets and all that shit there's like there's something to it <laughs> oh you merely adopted a dog all that shit like there's a narrative to that. There's storytelling happening, even though it's an action scene. Or 
when Neo fights Morpheus in the Matrix, in Matrix 1, right? When he first fights Morpheus. Like, yeah, it's an action scene. They're going, dun, 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 and they're doing all the fucking techno, whatever, fucking cyberpunk shit, and karate, and kung fu, and all that shit. But it's still, there's like a story being told, even amongst them fighting, like in their fight scene. And you can go even back to, I think another real a good one would be uh, Batman Begins with uh, Christian Bale and Liam Neeson and their uh, their training scenes, right? There's a whole bunch of storytelling happening while these guys are doing these karate moves and beating the shit out of each other, right? It's... So it doesn't have to be left behind. You don't have to just immediately like get rid of this old lady to give Jason Statham a motive to start fucking everyone up and shit. Like you could, you can story tell with that, right? So I'll never give it a pass. Like it is what it is. Uh, there's a lot. Like there's uh, similar things with other movies. Like a, at one point it looked like it's turning into John Wick, right? Where uh, the beekeeper Jason Statham's like. He's doing these, like, because he, he's retired, right? Technically, he's retired. So, I guess he's doing, like, unauthorized killings and fucking people up things. And then they're like, okay, we'll take him out. The, the beekeeper society or whatever the fuck. We'll take him out. Which shouldn't make too much sense because they look like they were high high dining class, too. Where it's like, is this about protecting the, the poor from the rich? Like, it looks like you guys are the rich. Whatever. But they send in another beekeeper. To go fuck up Jason Statham. He kills her. Like, lights her on fire or some shit. <laughs> kills her. And then they're like, you know what? Never mind. We're not going to help. <laughs> and then they stop. They don't send any more, any other people. It's like it's like they're about to start a John Wick movie. Then said, eh, you know what? Never mind. Fuck it. We'll leave that behind. Also, the, the scene where the other beekeeper goes after Jason Statham. Kind of reminds me of Mad Max. Like, it's like over the top. Like a fucking... What'd she have? Like a fucking... Like machine gun or something or Gatling gun or some shit attached to her truck. <laughs> like like she pulled the tarp away and there's things are just sitting there. It's like, what the fuck? Like, this is like Mad Max, where right? like where there's like over the top crazy weapons and shit like that. But uh yeah, a little bit of uh ripping from those things. A little bit. Uh what else? Jason Statham was fucking OP the entire fucking movie. I think there's one time where he's vulnerable, and that's near the end when he fights the the dude. I don't know where the fuck the dude's from. Australian? Irish? A Kiwi? Like New Zealand or some shit? I don't know where the fuck this guy's from. The dude with the with the prosthetic leg. He's like, I killed a bay caper before, but I got lucky. That guy. He, uh... <laughs> he's the only one that did, like, actual damage to Jason Statham. And Statham obviously fucks him up at the end anyways. Kind of rel- relatively quickly. So Jason Statham like runs through everyone. I watched him beat up an entire FBI SWAT unit without a weapon. Like just using punches punches and kicks and shit. And these guys were armed and ready to go for like a fight, right? They're about the they're staying on the perimeter of this building where the beaky where Jason Statham's supposed to show up at. So we're like, okay, we'll protect from out here because they won't let us protect inside. So we'll we'll set up a perimeter. And it's like there's nothing but FBI SWAT dudes with fucking big guns and shit around there. And he just fucks them all up. <laughs> without, I don't think, without killing any of them. He just fucks them all up with no weapon. I'm like, holy shit. Uh, he does that several times. Like, where it's just large groups of people. He just beats the fuck out of all of them. Like, no problem. Uh, well, they're plot flow. Like, things that just... I don't know if you call them plot flows, but they're like... It, it breaks your suspension of disbelief. Like, it, it's too nonsensical, right? You have you have the main bad guy, what's his name, Josh Hutchinson or something like that. The dude from F- Friday at Freddy's, that guy. Uh, he's like the main. He's the son of the president, right? Now that everyone knows, Jason Statham is on his way to the fu- to find that dude. He's there to kill uh, Josh Hutchinson. I want to make sure I got his name right. Well, let me see. Josh Hutcherson. Okay. 
Josh Hutcherson. Everyone knows he's on his way there to uh, to fuck him up. Right, they're hiding with the with the president, which is Josh Hutcherson's mom. Uh, so they're surrounded by like every unit of P- FBI, Secret Service, the fucking intelligence agencies, hired mercenary protectors, <laughs> private securities. They're surrounded by all these fucking people, right? But at the same time, they're having like a carnival or something. At the same time, <laughs> like no one cleared these fools out. I know it's a silly, like, kind of, it's not, I don't even, I don't even want to call it a nitpick. I think everyone should look at that and be like, that's silly. Why are they having a party while this dude's, like, on his way there? The dude who beats the fuck out of the FBI with no weapon. And, of course, what does he do? He infiltrates, beats the fuck out of everyone, and gets all the way to the fucking, you know, final boss. (laughs) And it shoots this dude in the head and leaps out a window. (laughs) It's like, shoots a bullet near the president. Like, he wasn't aiming for her. But Josh Hutcherson like had her at gunpoint, and he fucking you know Clint Eastwood quick draws shoots the fucking gun kills him before he shoots his mom. Which I don't know why he was even doing that. Uh, that doesn't make sense. like he was like gonna shoot his mom. He shot. <laughs> he, he, all right. So I guess the story is that he was going to, or that he during the election to get his mom elected. He was, like, running scams and shit to get money to boost her campaign and all that shit. And nobody knew about it. Like, he just did it behind her back and all that shit. And then when they started figuring that out, it's it's his mom in the room, and it's the number two dude at the FBI. <laughs> when he figured, like, he starts panicking, and he's just like, no, oh. like, he's doing, like, he'll never take me alive, shit. Or or he's, he's just going crazy, right? Like, it's, it's clearly, like the writer just infused some sort of internal neuroses or pathology or panic to where he just starts shooting and he just, he kills the number two guy at the FBI. <laughs> and then he was going to kill his mom. He was going to kill him. Not just his mom. He's going to kill the president slash his mom. <laughs> it's like, sorry, mom. He's right about the shooter. And Jason Statham, like Clint Eastwood, him, Clint Eastwood's him, like shoots him in the fucking face. And then it's, <laughs> He kills him, jumps out the fucking window, swims away in a scuba suit. Uh, once again, evading it, all intelligence agencies and everything, because <laughs> because he's a beekeeper, and right, they have to keep hyping him up throughout the movie. He's a beekeeper. These guys are the the baddest of the baddest, the toughest of the toughest, the hardest to kill. If they if they put you on a list, you're dead, guaranteed. It's like so they're like kind of famous amongst these you know, higher up intelligence people. But for some reason, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, what else we got here? And yeah, the weird political messaging. It, it's not so weird. It's just... I'll talk about that. It's so simple that it comes off as weird because you're portraying it through the imagery of Jason Statham <laughs> fucking kicking ass <laughs> of a bunch of different people, like like just whipping ass on everyone. Like, like oh, he's like a, like they're trying to make like a hero thing. Like he's a he's a quiet protector of society against corruption, and it's like so you picked out election integrity and scamming old people with internet like phishing operations and shit like that <laughs> or credit card scams and all that shit and like is that the biggest problem at the beekeeper see i know he wasn't working for them it was he said it wasn't about the bigger problem it's about per it was personal because once again the sloppy setup of the old lady just Right, her money's gone from from her own personal money to her charity. Right, all that money's gone now. So she just shoots herself that night without like asking for help of any kind. Just like, oh, it's gone. The numbers on my screen went to zero. So now I, right, the stupid setup now allows for this guy to go on this rampage. <laughs> I'm kind of rambling, but it's just like. Needs to be, I don't know, it needs to be emphasized. 
needs to be emphasized. Beekeepers are for the good of society. It's like, it's like, well, I could have pointed out 10 million fucking things going on around the planet that you could have started caring about. Jason Statham slash beekeeper. <laughs> but I guess he picked out election integrity and credit card scammers. <laughs> Actually, he didn't know about the election thing, I don't think. I think he only knew about the, the old lady getting scammed. So he just happened to take out someone who was, you know, frauding Americans and their voting system. I'm like, picking that out as your, the big thing. <laughs> it's like, it, it's a weird, it, like, it, right? It's not about the character. It's more about the, the story to the writer who's putting that narrative in so that when you look at the movie as a whole, you see that narrative there. And it's like, well, that's what you picked up? Really? In the political climate that we live in? And you have, you know, rioters of January 6th, or you have, you know, gerrymandering, or whatever the fuck, and pull it in the political sphere in, in regards to election integrity, or the Russians, right? All this shit with election integrity. Like, so, like, that's your big thing you go with? That's why it's like, it just loses point. Even though you're attempting to say something, I just think it's dog water. <laughs> I think it's, you know, boiled, it's, it's, it's debased, it's, it doesn't hold weight for me. Maybe that's my political bias of being non-political, but it is what it is, that's how I view it. It seems like a, just an empty political message. But like I said, I'll, you know, kudos for, I guess, attempting to put something in there. Because Jason Statham saying it, it's about right and wrong. It's like, well, I mean, there's so many rights and wrongs. Why why did the writer and director pick this? Right? Because Jason Statham's character is not a real person. He's a written character. Someone wrote his words for him. Someone wrote his motives for him. And this is, and someone wrote the motives of the other characters and the scenarios at their end. And it, this ended up being the narrative of the, of the whole movie. So... Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. About, it didn't seem about right and wrong. It seemed more about whatever writer or director's political narrative, <laughs> basically, which I think is minimal, mediocre, shallow, not deep water, at best. Okay, uh, I've rambled for long enough. Uh, as a score. Actually, one thing I'll point out. The mom, when the son died, I liked her acting there. I was like, oh, man, poor mom. Like She was fucking howling and screaming, man. I'm like, oh, shit. That was like an actual reaction compared to the FBI agent, the daughter, whose mom shot herself in the beginning of the movie, right? The old lady who shot herself. This FBI agent is her daughter, and she's just like, oh, yeah, mom died. <laughs> yeah, mom died, you know. Anyways, I need to figure I need to figure out this uh you know, <laughs> who's this beekeeper guy? <laughs> what was going on here investigatively? It's like, yo, your mom you I think even a character says in a movie like, yo, your mom died. You want to take a day off or something? But she was just like I don't know, maybe she was jealous of her brother that got more got more of the love. I don't know. All right, let me grade this thing. Uh I'll give it a 6.5, 6.4, 6.5 out of 10. There's some things that look cool. There's plenty of things that look fucking funny. The the dude who got tied to the fucking SUV and he rolled it off a bridge <laughs> the way his, is like a, is like a dummy or something. I don't think they use CGI. I think they use a dummy the way it looked. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that shit, the way he just, he's just like suitcased in the air, like a flat board just flying through the air into the water. It's fucking funny as shit to me. That was just funny fucking looking. But, uh, yeah. All right. There you go. 6.5 out of 10. If you're bored and you see this on TV, then that would be my only recommendation. Maybe study it to, for, uh, I don't know. Maybe try to understand what the fuck this guy, the writers were trying to say with this movie. There you go.